Hi, I'm Cassandra Coleman and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi everyone, it's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press and today I am so happy to be joined by Cassandra Coleman. How are you? Hi, I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I know we were just talking ahead of time. Um, now that you are in California, you've really been enjoying the sunny weather. Oh yeah, it's just a breeze and just like also the fact that there's barely any humidity. I feel like I can breathe so much better. I love it. Must be good for your vocals as well. Yes, it really is. It honestly is. Like usually the springtime is the worst time for me, but that's in Tennessee and that's a totally different climate. It's just like a dust bowl. <laughs> so let's talk about your roots and your background. What was that initial spark that got you interested in making music? Um. Honestly, I can't remember a time where music wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, and I know that sounds cliche, but it, it just honestly is the truth. Um, I mean, I know my mom was telling me at like two, I was, you know, keeping beat with stuff. And by five, I was harmonizing. And I just like, I've just sang for as long as I can remember. And it, you know, to me, it was never something that I thought would ha I'd have as a career, just like a pipe dream, you know, um, because I had seen so many of like my favorite like child artists grow up and completely change you know and to me I was raised where it was kind of like possibly a negative thing to be in the limelight and it can be you know I think it's definitely a balance um but so I had, it was always just a pipe dream but um I think as I entered my 20s I suddenly came to a point where I was like okay you know am I going to be bitter if I don't pursue music? Am I going to live a life of what if, what ifs? And so suddenly the fear of living a life of what ifs, you know, that fear became greater than the fear of being on a stage. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> Who prompted you to go and audition for American Idol? Because I think it, you had like a couple of Zoom auditions before producers, before you actually went in front of the judges. So who was the one that kind of pushed you that you have to do this? Or was it yourself thinking like, you know, I might regret this down the road? Um, it was a mixture of myself feeling like I was gonna regret this and thinking, what do I have to lose? You know, if, if I don't make it, if I don't get a yes, the worst that happens to me is I'm right back to where I started at and I love where I'm at. I was managing a coffee shop. I surrounded by friends and family in a beautiful town. So I was like, I literally have nothing to lose except for my pride, you know, might be a little hurt. So it was a mixture of that. And in addition to um, honestly, like all of my roommates and my close friends were just so excited for me when I told them I had this opportunity. And when I would start to get a little psyched out, they'd be like, no, you have to do this. So I was like, okay, okay, I'm gonna do it. So. Yeah, it was a mix. I think viewers are also glad that you decided to do Idol watching you perform. <laughs> At your initial audition, when Lionel Richie asked you to play something on the piano, what was running through your mind? Did you think it was that <laughs> make or break moment in terms of you getting a golden ticket? Oh, yeah, because prior to that, I thought, okay, I did pretty good. Like, I'm just going to slide out of this, you know, uh, out of this audition and I'll be fine. But um when, cause at first I didn't understand Lionel's question. They cut it down to be shorter, but I didn't understand. And then he was like, he just flat out, do you play piano? And I was like, oh, uh, I'm mediocre, you know? And I was like, I was literally like praying to God. I was like, it was going so well. Why did this have to happen? <laughs> and so I was like, I literally don't have any songs memorized. So I said to them, I sat down and I said, can I think for just a second? And they were like, yeah, yeah, of course. And the only song I could remember was the first song I ever learned on piano. And I was either like 11 or 12 at the time. And I was just like, dear fingers, please, you know, please take care of this because my brain has no clue if I'm going to play this correctly. So my fingers took over. And I mean, I didn't, I wouldn't say I was proud of that segment of the audition, but I did the best I could on the spot. So so what's it been like for you and your family getting the opportunity to watch your idol journey play out on national television? Um, it's been quite surreal. I think, you know, everyone's a little bit, um, they're not used to the amount of attention that they're receiving as well, because, you know, a lot of people are messaging and contacting them. And uh, my dad's like saying like, you know, someone I haven't talked to in like 20 years just messaged me the other day and said he watched your audition. And so I think everyone's been kind of shocked by 
the outpouring of love that we've received. I mean, my parents and my family always believed in me, but I think until it actually happens, you don't grasp the, how large the scale of audience is, um, you know, through ABC and through American Idol. And so it's just been like overwhelming. I mean, I started this whole venture off um, with like a little over a thousand people following me. And as of today, I'm about to hit 40,000 people. And it's just like, we just can't even grasp it. Yeah, I'm sure you're still having like that pinch me moment. (laughs) Your nerves have been well documented on the show so far. But with Showstoppers round, I think we really did get to see you let go a bit more. You were barefoot in your element. So with each passing performance, have you been gaining more and more confidence? I would say I have been gaining more confidence. I don't know that I would say that my uh, stage presence has improved necessarily, but um, mindset wise, I mean, I have been trying to completely adjust the way that I go about um, talking to myself. So, you know, going into this, it was very common. I mean, for the past 24 years of my life or, you know, whenever I was conscious enough to be thinking to myself, my thought process was usually quite negative towards myself. Like, no, you can't do that. No, you're not capable. The judges are going to give you a no. You know, it was always thinking the worst because I thought, well, if I expect the worst, then maybe I won't be as disappointed. But um, going into this, I've been trying to adjust it and, you know, the power of what you say coming to fruition. So I'm like, now when I go to a performance or when I go on stage, I'm like, you are capable. You are not a bad singer. You can do this. You know, you're doing the best you can. And so I'm trying to completely shift the way I talk to myself. So yes, my confidence has been bolstered, but I mean, when you're somebody who like, you know, struggles with self-doubt and things like that, I think regardless of what stage you get to, it's going to always be there along the way, but you just have to learn to start like looking at it and being like, okay, I see you. I see you're there. You know, you might always be here, but we're going to do this anyways, you know, and you've got enough people behind you. You've got an army of support. So that's definitely the army of people loving me and telling me you're capable of this has definitely helped my confidence. I love that. And hey, it's always a good day for some positive affirmations. Um, We won't go into obviously you can't share who your celebrity do at partners but how has that been going like I will ask were you a fan of their music prior to being partnered with them yes I was 100% a fan of their music prior to it and if I could have told you know young Cassie um that I would get to perform with this person I mean I would have thought it was a joke and so I just feel like I don't know I I just thought, how am I getting this opportunity? You know, like I barely have any experience with music. Six months prior, I was just, you know, singing in my bedroom. And all of a sudden I'm on a stage with an artist that I've been listening to for the past decade. And it just, it didn't even feel like I was worthy of it, you know, but I'm trying to have that positive self-talk and be like, you're worthy of this. It's okay. (laughs) So have you been able to ask them questions about the industry or has it very much been focused on like rehearsing the song together? Um, We got some time to talk ahead of time um, and I got to pick their brain a little bit. You know, it was mainly supposed to be centered around myself and how I've been doing Uh, which I was like, man, I wish we could shift it. I want to just talk about them, you know? So, but there was a little bit of a balance, but honestly, I would love to have more time with this person. And hopefully after all this airs, maybe we'll become buds or something. We'll see. Fingers crossed. (laughs) Somebody we do know that you duetted with was your fellow contestant, Wyatt Pike for the duets round. When you two were partnered together, did you kind of just connect musically right from the get-go? Yeah, I mean, we have had barely, I mean, I had seen him just like sauntering about, you know, during the process of, um, of Hollywood week. And I remember thinking to myself, like, he looks like a really cool dude. Like he had like this $2 bill coming out of his hat and he looks like a, like a young Harrison Ford to me. And so I, he had stood out to me, but I didn't know anything about him. So when we were paired together and we both started singing, we were both just like pleasantly surprised. And I remember we were just like smiling ear to ear. We were like, this is going to work just fine. So um, yeah, we really connected and we've remained friends ever since. Like before my audition aired, he called me and just like gave me some, you know, words of affirmation. And, you know, he's just a really supportive guy. And he's like that to all of his friends. He's just like that one guy that everybody loves. 
That's so sweet. And I'm not sure if either of you have been reading online comments, but they're saying you really need to team up and do more together as a duo. What do you have to say about that? (laughs) Um, I mean, I don't know that we would like ever be like a duo as in like the way the Civil Wars is or something. I, know <laughs> I was going to say it's together. hard to focus on your solo careers and the last and the lad, but never say <laughs> never. <laughs> no, yeah, we'll never say never. But um, but to me, I mean, I think Wyatt is like a standalone artist on his own. So I think he's going to do fantastic by himself. But I'm sure that we will be featuring in each other's, you know, EPs or albums at some point in the future. You heard it here first, collaborations confirmed. <laughs> yeah. So you've already met friends on this journey, um, like you mentioned, Wyatt, Alanis, mm-hmm. Colin, Hunter, just to name a few. Tell me about these connections that you've made so far. Starting with Alanis, I mean, we just connected right off the bat. Her mom reached out to us when we were, um, my sister and I were at the auditions. And um, I could just tell she had a really pleasant spirit about her. and she's Puerto Rican and I'm part Puerto Rican. So we kind of like bonded on that too. And uh, yeah, she's just a little rock star and just has a super pleasant disposition. So I've loved getting to know her and Hunter and I only live a few minutes from each other. Um, So prior to coming out here to LA to film for the top 24, we got to meet up together and work on some co-writing and stuff. And actually we're going to work on some of that again today. So yeah, all the connections have just been wonderful, very genuine connections too. Like I think coming into the music industry, I was very afraid of people having like ulterior motives for their friendships, but at least everyone here that I've met for the top 24, I can say I would genuinely consider a friend at this point. And I'm just glad to have all these people in my corner for the future, you know, whenever we start, you know, establishing our careers to be able to work together. That's great. And really, like you mentioned, it's you're all competitors, but you really just want to see each other succeed. And you're so supportive of one another. In terms of Cassandra as an artist, who are your major influences in terms of sound? Um, So I would say like growing up, my major influences would have been artists like Stevie Nicks, James Taylor, Enya. And then now my main influences are more like Aurora, Birdie, Justin Vernon from Bon Iver. Um, I really like Agnes Obel. Um, I mean, I could think of, I could list off a ton, but I, I really love um, more of like a atmospheric, atmospheric kind of sound, um, like dark indie pop kind of genre. How many times in a given week has someone recommended you do a Florence and the Machine cover? <laughs> <laughs> that happens like every single day. And then like, I mean, I, I want to cover one of her songs for the show, but she has limited, like, act, like not all of her songs are allowed. Yeah. But I do plan to definitely put out a cover of one of her songs. Um, there's an old one on YouTube of me singing uh, uh, Cosmic Love. I think it's Cosmic Love, Cosmic Star, Cosmic Love. Um, and I think it's from like eight years ago. So if you want to hear Baby Cassie singing a cover of Florence check out my YouTube. (laughs) So tell me about the music that you have been working on. You mentioned um, prior to coming back out to California. Have you been songwriting a lot this past year? Um, So honestly, prior to coming out here, my plans were to quit my job and travel the world. Um, So obviously, so go back to 2020, COVID stopped that. And then I was like, okay, well, I was supposed to go out to Nepal and that stopped. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just travel within the States. And then it was like, no, you need to stay home because your sis- my little sister was going to get married and I needed to help her around, you know, put the wedding and stuff. And then I was like, okay, well, whenever her wedding is done, then I'm going to go travel the, uh, the country. And then the day of her wedding I, or the day before uh, her wedding, I got contacted to come audition. So prior to all this, I was not songwriting because it was just something that I thought was, you know, like I said earlier, a pipe dream. I thought it was kind of pointless. Like I would create my own melodies or things like that on my phone, but no, it never left my phone. So now that the future looks completely different and could potentially mean being an artist, I have completely shifted that. And I try to spend a lot more time, um, writing more as opposed to like the actual musical part of creating not like production but I am just trying to like you know write like a stream of consciousness like how I'm feeling about something if I'm emotional about something or happy about something I grab out my notes and I immediately start writing about it so I'm working on the writing aspect 
And I feel like being with the top 24, a lot of them have been songwriting for a period of time. So I'm sure you've been like getting tips from them and advice. Yeah, it's been really inspiring being around, especially because I'm one of the older people in the contestants. I mean, I'm Isn't one of that the crazy? I know, I'm like, <laughs> and you're still 24. like 24. <laughs> but I'm like, well, apparently I'm the old one now or one of the older ones. And I'm seeing like these youngsters who are already putting out music. And I'm like, I'm so behind. But I'm trying to remind myself, everyone has their own timeline. And uh, mainly have been seeing it all as an inspiration to create myself. And so many of us have already been like, okay, after this, we're getting together and we're co-writing. So I'm excited for all the future co-writes. So tell me about the co- community support that you've received from Columbia, Tennessee. Um, it's crazy seeing the amount of support coming from Columbia. Like I will go on to a video on like YouTube and I'll see all these comments or like on Facebook and it's like supporting you from Columbia, supporting you from Spring Hill. And it has just been mind blowing to see this mass amount of love. I mean, I knew that Columbia and I've been saying this to everybody, like I knew Columbia was gonna step up, like regardless of being me or someone else, I knew that they were gonna support one of their own. But um, getting to be the recipient of that support has just been Like it's brought me to tears many times. The amount of people saying, you know, we watched, okay. So I went and spoke at an elementary school from a distance, of course. And, um, and the teacher said to all the students, there's like 60 of them. And she said, everybody raise your hand who watched Cassie's audition on Sunday night. And I kid you not like 50 of the children had their hands raised. And I was just like, I don't even, I don't even know these people, you know, and that's just like shows the amount of support and love that my town has been, has been giving that they're just tuning in to, to watch me and cheer me on. And they've done a couple newspaper articles about me. So I'm just, I'm happy that, um, that my town is, you know, getting some recognition because I feel like they deserve it. That's amazing. And I saw that you were at a mural. You got to perform at like a mural unveiling when you were back in town. You've been on like the city government's Instagram page. So it's really nice to see them recognizing what you're doing. And we'll give a shout out to uh, your place of work prior to uh, coming out to LA, Buckhead Coffee House, where you're a coffee shop manager. What is your go-to order there? Um, My go-to order is probably either like a black cold brew um or an iced americano with a little bit of like honey and powdered cinnamon but no cream I'm not a dairy person (laughs) that's probably my fave I'm sure your team misses you but they're proud of you um I saw you posted a picture of a latte on Instagram how long did it take you to master the latte art I mean honestly some days like my hands are shaky and I can't even you know master a rosetta or something like that but um I would say Honestly, it probably took about one day because prior to, and, but let me explain, prior to um, being a manager, I had training that I had to do because I worked at a coffee shop in Washington, DC, and you have like an eight hour class and it's just intense coffee training. And by the end of it, you have to be able to pour something. Um, so honestly, because I'm managing most of the time, I don't get to be on front a lot. So I have only mastered the Rosetta because I don't get a lot of opportunities to get to be the one pouring. But um, I believe me, like whenever this is all over, I will like still be going back there to make my own drinks because I'm pretty sure they're going to let me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know, just like let a customer behind the counter. No, no, this is a former <laughs> manager and, you know, maybe American Idol winner by then, just saying. Um, you also have a passion for photography. Where did this kind of interest stem from? Um, art is like big in my family. My dad um, was in the military, but prior to that was an elementary art teacher. So, I mean with four other siblings, we were continuing, and we were homeschooled for most of that. There was always like art projects being made or photo shoots being done or sewing clothes for my dolls and designing my own, you know, uh, you know, fashion line and stuff like that. So um, art was always really big. And it, I feel like majority of my cousins are quite artistic or musical as well. Um, So I think I got into photography when I was probably about 12. My dad had bought a Nikon and uh, I kept stealing it from him and eventually stealing it from him. And eventually he just went ahead and gave it to me. Um, 
so photography is definitely okay. is it a helicopter yeah. <laughs> every time we try to film for the show helicopters just show up out of nowhere and we're like okay restart photography yeah so got into photography at a young age it's definitely not something I plan to stop like if you you know if you have an eye for I mean I'm not saying I have an eye necessarily but if art or if you know photography is your passion like you can't just turn that off because you're pursuing something else so when I was out at like Hollywood week and even here still I prefer to be the person who's behind the phone taking pictures of other people. So honestly, I've had a pretty hard time finding photos to post for my Instagram because like all my photos are from like three years ago because I, someone will offer to take a picture of me and I'm like, no, no, no. And I go hide. So, so yeah, but I prefer to be on the other end, but yeah, photography is just something I love. I love to just have one picture, especially from like each moment that just like perfect, perfect or perfectly like wraps up how I felt about a day you know did you bring your Nikon or camera to California or did you have to keep that at home I kept it at home just because um actually my Nikon has been damaged and I'm saving up for a new camera so in the meantime um yeah I'm not making any money right now so that camera is going to be on hold for a bit <laughs> but but maybe one day when I'm an established musician I'll get the the, if I'm actually switching over to Canon, maybe it'll be the, I'll be able to afford the Canon of my dreams. <laughs> and that one is? Um, it's like a Mark D5, I think is the one I was looking at. I'll pretend I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Not a photographer here, but it's always nice to have that other creative outlet that you enjoy doing and can spend time on. And yeah. we have our signature question for you. If you could okay. be any ice cream flavor, which would Ooh. you be and why? 100% would be a coffee flavored ice cream because I love everything about coffee. Obviously it's my, one of my other passions and uh, it's my favorite ice cream. So. Great answer. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you for asking me. I'm so honored. Make sure to catch Cassandra on American Idol this Sunday on ABC. New episodes also air on Monday and we will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.